Hey guys, I'm Chris Buck and a very warm welcome to Friday Fretworks. In this week's video, I'm going to be taking a closer look at something which I've kind of been dying to show you for a little while now, and that is my new Journeyman pedal board by Alder and Ash. Now, Mr. Rich Norton of Alder and Ash got in touch with me, kind of maybe late last year, I'm guessing, asking if I'd be interested in being an ambassador for his new Journeyman line of boards. And honestly, I just leapt at the opportunity. I'd seen his boards floating around in various places, primarily Instagram. I think I'm right in saying that Rabia has one. I know Boss definitely have a couple of demo boards that they kind of take around at various different shows just incredibly well-made boards that first and foremost look absolutely gorgeous i'm not sure what wood this is specifically my timber knowledge extends as far as you know maybe able to say this is undoubtedly from a tree let's say that much but just a gorgeous bit of wood incredibly well put together just everything you would want in a pedal board now the top actually flips up to reveal a kind of a lower space where you can store power or even pedals if you're using a switching system, which is one of the kind of main factors in me thinking this is definitely going to become my main board. Now, if you've seen my custom pedal boards boards that I did on, or demoed on that pedal show last year, or I've done various things with on my channel, still love that board a bit. It's incredibly well made. It's in a flight case. So that's always there for kind of fly dates or anything that's going to, you know, require kind of more heavy handling i guess or traveling but for kind of shows around the uk just something a little bit lighter a little bit more compact definitely looking forward to putting this one together it's going to have a gig rig g2 across the front if all goes to plan and you can actually store quite a lot of the pedals that you see on top of the pedal board at the moment underneath obviously if you're not looking to access those directly with your feet you can then control them with a the switcher giving you infinitely more space on top to stick stuff that you do actually need to access with your feet so i'm going to have my empress tape delay on top in order to be able to control the presets just a couple of different things that i'm very excited to put together you will undoubtedly see more of that in the coming weeks but the reason i'm showing you this board this week is i have a couple of gigs coming up a couple of little shows here and there which just require something a little bit more kind of practical than my full board to be honest I've, it's a point that i've made in previous episodes that nobody wants to see billy big bollocks turning up at a gig that is not his own spreading himself out across the stage and just generally making a little bit of a nuisance of himself so tonight i'm doing a show with ariel posen in swindon so i'm going to take this board and over the weekend coming i'm actually playing at the birmingham guitar show again i'm doing a show on the live stage which is hence the kind of little loop pedal for that but i'm going to be doing a couple of appearances at primarily the thorpey effects booth maybe popping in on victory couple of little different things here and there where it's just going to be nice to have a small little board that's not really getting in the way and not taking up too much space so without further ado i'm going to take you through some of my pedal choices explain what order they're in and why i've chosen them so let's take it away so first in the chain we have the Greystone ff01 just to give you a little bit of background on that it's come all the way from the east coast of australia but honestly worth every mile of that distance traveled one of the best if not the best fuzz face that I've played in a hell of a long time. One of my favorite fuzz pedals of all time is the Dennis Cornell Dallas Arbus of Fuzz Face. I did an episode of Friday Fretworks on that early last year, maybe. It's a great sounding pedal. It's just hideously impractical with its size and its shape and its, you know, odd little quirk here and there. Just idiosyncratic, shall we say. This, to my ear, takes all the best, you know, elements of that, that bloom, that fatness, that kind of warmth and just overwhelming sound that you get with a great fuzz face. But minus any of the incon you know inconsistencies or idiosyncrasies so very very cool pedal moving on to the serotonin centura no guess is what it's meant to be and no guess is what it's meant to be doing to be honest the way it's set it's doing that very archetypal clone clean boost moving over to cali 76 compressor um honestly again it's the best sounding compressor i've ever used it's studio grade it's a fairly pricey obese to be honest but once you get it you've got a great compressor for life that will Doubtless never leave your board if you're a fan of compressors. Moving on to, on the far side, we have the Gunshot by Thorpey FX. Now, this is only a primarily handle higher gain duties. Probably not so much with a strap, but if I'm using my Revstar or a Les Paul or something like that, that's just, you know, an absolutely incredible sounding pedal. To be honest, it does sound great with strats as well, but it's just, that's why it's there for this. Moving on to, probably the least exciting pedal on the pedal board, we have the Polytune by TC Electronic. Great sounding tuner. Um, that's a contradiction in terms of whether there was one. Great tuner, works incredibly efficiently. Make sure I'm in tune, what more can you want? Um, moving on to the Royal Flush. Now, you may well know I'm a big fan of the Straight Flush by VS Audio out in Greece. This is the double version of that pedal, the Royal Flush, with a higher gain side on the left-hand side. Um, honestly, just, you know, that left-hand side is great to have on tap should I want a little bit more gain especially given this board is meant to be a bit of a do-it-all board to cover a couple of bases in the next week or so. 
that's very much why it is there. Moving on to the Black Box 2 by the Snouse Electric Company. Very much based on a Marshall Blues Breaker, but with Josh, a couple of extra little tweaks here and there and little controls. We've got a couple of little dip switches. Great sounding pedal, um, set in its kind of classic mode at the moment, so very much kind of uh, Blues Breaker based. Moving into something a little bit more weird um, and wonderful, we have the Supro Tremolo. Um, which I've done an episode on this recently. It's a great sounding harmonic tremolo and a normal kind of amplitude tremolo. I've got it set on the harmonic tremolo side of things. Just, you know, does what it does. Great sounding pedal. Check out the dedicated video I did on that if you want to hear a little bit more of it. Moving on to the Boona by um, Donna Prince down on the far left hand side there. Echo Rack based. Honestly, <sighs> Got two pedals that do the echo, echo Rec thing very well. I've got that and the actual Catalane bred Echo Rec. A shootout would be kind of pointless, to be honest, but, you know, there's a reason that what's on my board, put it that way. Great sounding pedal. Does what it does incredibly well. Moving on to the last pedal. Kind of not the most exciting, but very practical in this case. I'm going to be doing, as I said, a clinic at the Birmingham Guitar Show. And that is what that is for. Just for demonstrating a couple of different ideas, jamming at different booths at the guitar show, and just, you know making sure I'm not on my own. So I think the next thing to do is to delve in and actually get some tones. So uh, let's see what it sounds like. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you.